Hello everyone, it's Redefact. Today we will compare M1E2 SAP and T90A. Well, I will not talk about history of those two tanks, because it will take too much time and doesn't matter for the overall comparison. But that aside, let's start the comparison. We will first take a look at the mobility of the two. M1E2 SAP has AGT-1500, which is a gas turbine engine with 1500 horsepower and gives M1A2 power to weight ratio of 23 horsepower per ton and max speed of 68 km per hour. T90A has V92 S2 12 cylinder diesel engine with 1000 horsepower, which gives T90A power to weight ratio of 21 horsepower per ton and maximum speed of 70 km per hour. Operational range of M1A2 SAP is 425 km. The tank weights around 63 metric tons. T90A has operational range of 550 km and the tank weights around 46 metric tons. Now, as we could see, speed of both tanks is almost the same. But those aren't the only factors we should consider. M1A2 SAP having gas turbine engine consumes much more fuel than T90A. And although having more fuel capacity, it has 100 km lesser range than T90A does. Also, Abrams is a lot heavier than T90A, which can sometimes, in certain situations, go bad for the tank when crossing soft terrain or bridges. When crossing water, M1A2 SAP can go as deep as 2 meters, while T90A can go up to 5 meters deep. Now, let's have a look at protection. M1A2 SAP has a version of Chubba armor which consists of ceramic, steel and nether materials. On top of that, on turret front, M1A2 SAP has a layer of depleted uranium armor which drastically improves its protection. The real armor composition of T90A is unknown. T90A also, on the other hand, does not have depleted uranium layer, but its components with contact 5 EREA which on top of added protection against heat, also has added protection against APFSDS projectiles. The armor estimates in rolled homogeneous armor equivalency of the two are 960mm versus APFSDS and 1620mm versus heat on M1A2 SAP's turret front, 920mm versus APFSDS and 1340mm versus heat on T90A's turret front. 650mm versus APFSDS and 970mm versus heat on M1A2 SEPS front hull and 710mm versus APFSDS and 1070mm versus heat on T90A's front hull. What T90 also has is its active protection system, Stora, which consists of smoke discharges and two dazzlers, which can deflect incoming wire guided cyclist systems laser guided ATGMs. It can also be equipped with Arena Hard Kill active protection system, which destroys incoming heat projectiles. M1A2 SAP, on the other hand, has a counter remote electronic warfare or crew system which disables remotely operated explosives to be detonated on or near the tank. M1A2 SAP can be equipped with TUSK system, which allows mounting EREA blocks on M1A2 side armor to increase protection against heat projectiles. T90A also has three big EREA blocks on the side, and fourth can be added if so desired. Another advantage of M1A2 SAP is its safe ammo rack which is located in the back of the turret and is protected with blast doors and blowout panels which direct the explosion outside of the tank. There is also additional ammo in the hull compartment which is also protected. On T90A it's not the case. Ammo is located in the same fashion as previous T72B where it doesn't have much protection and direct hit to the ammo rack would almost certainly result in a loss of the tank. Next up is the firepower. M1A2 SAP has M256 120mm smoothbore gun, which is a licensed-built copy of German Rheinmetall 
120mm L44 gun, but features many improvements over the original German variant. T90A has two A46 M5 125mm smoothbore gun, whose main difference over previous versions is new autoloading system, which can house longer APFSDS rounds. M1A2 SAP can fire APFSDS and MPAD projectiles, while T90A can fire APFSDS, heat, high explosive fragmentation, and ATGM projectiles. APFSDS projectile fired by M1A2 SAP is MA2983 depleted uranium projectile, with a velocity of around 1500 meters per second, and ability to penetrate contact 5 ERA on T90A with penetration of over 760 mm at 2 km. M830A1 MPAT is multi-purpose projectile. It can be switched to fire air bursts over targets such as low-flying helicopters. It can also function as heat projectile. APFSDS fired by T90A is Svinets 2 with depleted uranium rod which has velocity of around 1700 meters per second and penetration is very much similar to the one of MA293 but is slightly better at around 800 millimeters at 2 kilometers. But it's unknown if Swinets 2 has ability to beat ERA like MA293, but it's very unlikely, since NATO tanks have no or small amount of ERA placed on tanks. Even the one they have isn't designed to beat APFSDS projectiles like the ones on Russian tanks, which makes MA29A3 better for firing at tanks with ERA placed on them. T90A can also fire heat projectiles against more lightly armored opponents and high explosive fragmentation, which is excellent anti-infantry projectile. The main advantage of T90A is its ability to fire ATGM, which has range of 5 km, which is more than any APFSDS projectile with excellent accuracy. Both tanks have second generation thermal imaging system for both gunner and commander and remotely operated AA HMGs. M1A2 SAP can also be equipped with Kraus system, which is also stabilized, has separate thermal imaging system and its own laser rangefinder. Another feature where M1A2 SAP stands out is possession of battle management system, which allows commander to assess the current situation of the battlefield on a screen with a map, and all friendly and enemy units marked on it, which drastically improves the situational awareness. Now, both tanks have very different loading processes. T90A has an auto-loading system, which has consistent loading period of 8 rounds per minute. M1A2 SAP, on the other hand, has manual loader, where the loading speed depends on loader skill and as well as circumstances, such as are the blast doors kept open or are they closed, is a tank moving or not, which all depends on loader's loading speed. So taking everything into consideration, rate of fire of the Abrams can be from 6 to 15 rounds per minute, which, as I said, depends on loader skills and situation. Both tanks have been combat proven. M1A2 saw actions in Iraq and Afghanistan, and export variants have been used in combat by Saudi Arabia. T90 saw action in Chechen War, where one famously shrugged off seven direct RPG hits with no damage to the vehicle except few ERA blocks missing. Export variants are now being used by Syrian army, where one sustained a hit from tall missile. Both tanks have proven themselves more than excellent combat machines. Both tanks are being upgraded to meet more modern standards. Most modern variant of M1A2 SAP is SAP V3, and most modern variant of T90A is T90AM, but majority of information is classified for both tanks. That is it, thanks for watching. If you think I made a mistake somewhere, feel free to correct me in the comment section down below. And I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.